Hi, good afternoon to all those rose lovers out there and welcome back to my garden. And today we'll be looking at the, uh, some of the, uh, the roses that can thrive in partial shade. And as we all know, sunny locations in our garden is at a premium. Uh, making videos is uh, started to become more addictive than rose growing itself. And here we're looking at a rose called Ancient Mariner by David Austin. An impressive variety bearing masses of large petal blooms on a bushy upright growing habit. And these blooms has a, a medium strong myrrh fragrance. And first introduced in 2015. And uh, I've had this rose for almost four years now. And this rose is being partially shaded by this big tree right behind it. There you go. And there was a time this plant bears a lot of flowers, but I never really caught it at the right time. Look at these beautiful blooms right next to the, the ground cover rose. Of course, I would never know how well this would perform under the sun. But these blooms does seem to last a, lot, a, a bit longer being in this shade. So if you are looking for a, a rose that can thrive in partial shade, I think this one could be the right rose for you. We are having a, a lovely spell of uh, warm weather uh, this week. And then from next week on, weathers will get a bit cooler as we enter into autumn. And our rose growing season will be more likely to be over. May Marion, named after the, the companion of the mythical Robin Hood of Sherwood Forest, and she did fight alongside Robin Hood and a legend and a myth in her own right. And there's never been any reveal or information regarding this rose and I'm not going to give it a review as I, have, I don't have the capability of uh, giving her a good review but I will give you my, uh, my impression on this rose. She is on her third summer she never disappoints me fighting alongside my other roses against all the, the bad weather elements and black spot and yet still came on top and these blooms are has a light medium myrrh fragrance and fading to a fruity scent when it ages and very similar to an ancient mariner Marin does have a, a better fragrance and, uh, but a very very good rose to have in any partial shaded garden I can't understand why this rose isn't as popular as it is and for me she has always done very well uh, very very healthy rose as you can see it's very bushy as well and there aren't that many f roses in my garden as bushy as this and these blooms has a very lovely mm. lovely lovely fruity myrrh fragrance such a shame I didn't manage to capture any other flushes this season but I really really recommend this rose uh, 
this is not a, a rose related thing but a bug related thing uh, you see that thing banging in the, uh, the middle of my camera uh, it's a spider uh, a big fat one as well and a hairy one oh my gosh ever wondered what a, a spider tastes like well I can tell you it tastes like spider I've had so many of these spiders and webs and what have you in my face making these videos. Uh, it's such a horrible feeling. And this time of the year, they do prefer to start building their webs amongst my, uh, my plants and roses. I don't know where to, to destroy or just let them be. But these ones are really big and hairy. And look at these evil eyes looking at me. Ugh. Don't think you can. Oh, there it is. The perfect shot there with his evil eyes staring into my face. Yeah, I think I'd better leave it alone. This is Strawberry Hill, bred by David Austin. Beautiful at all stages. Very small clusters of mid pink, medium large cup rosette blooms. And these blooms has a very strong mirth honey fragrance a very unique fragrance amongst all my uh, David Austin roses and a rose that has one of the, the best fragrance online this rose performed best in a sunny spot but I don't have a sunny spot only partial shade and this rose is at the moment in a very tall pot and in a few years time, it may restrict its growth. But the good thing about having it in a pot is you can see the, uh, the cascading effect of these blooms. Um, flowering from top to bottom. I don't have any other roses nearby to pass the, uh, along any black spots or any other disease. So this blue, this foliage is looking absolutely so healthy and really, really glossy. And this rose has really surprised me how well it's done, considering it has very minimal sunlight. And I absolutely really, really love this rose. And eventually I will train it up along this wall, hiding that water pipe. I do have a, another two Strawberry Hill as well in sunny location, but neither of them are doing as well as this. And this is a rose called Pink Perfection, a hybrid tea rose bred by Cordes in Germany in 1999 and it has large fully double blooms in rich pink with a very strong sweet fruity scent. And this Pink Perfection has won several awards including the Gold Standard Awards in 2011 for Best Fragrance. And a rose like this performs best in their capability in full sun. But has done extremely well in the very, very partial shading of the garden. And shaded by this very, very tall tree. I don't know what that's called, but it does have a lot of these small helicopter blades that drops in autumn. And these blooms, blooms in singular stem, a typical, typical of a hybrid tea characteristic, and ideal for cut flowers to take indoors. And these blooms are not the prettiest, very loosely formed and very ruffled. And they do look their best when it's uh, halfway open. And something like this. And this is when it's uh, beginning to open up. Fantastic, fantastic rose. Uh, 
has very, very surprised me and how well it's done in, in this very shady part of the garden. And next to that, I have a rose called Harlow Car by David Austin. And look at it. I'll show you how lethal it is. Look at these, uh, these spikes. Honestly, you really need the 10 layers of uh, garden glove to prune this thing. And absolute lethal of a rose. I wonder if they do uh, pruners with extension. That would be good. And then another David Austin rose called Mary Rose. And a lot, as you can see, a lot of the uh, the, the leaves have started to uh, go yellow, but it is normal for this time of the year, as it is starting to shred its leaf, ready for hibernation in autumn. But these two rows have been overshadowed by this gorgeous, beautiful rose. Look at these blooms, an absolute pink perfection. I've been watching some of the, uh, the YouTube clips on my video and my voice for some reason sound very odd and very, very old. Seems like I've got a frog down my throat, but in fact, I'm not that old. Um, but saying that, I'm not that young either. So today I want to uh, bring out my younger enthusiastic voice. So hopefully it would uh, induce some more younger subscribers. <laughs> yeah, I was only kidding. But here we are looking at this gorgeous, beautiful rose called Penelope Lively looking absolutely gorgeous on a very wet and uh, windy day like today and these stems are very very thin for the moment but it is a, quite a, a, a baby rose and I don't really recommend anyone putting in this in the ground as this will sprout everywhere but I've got mine in the pot at the moment and it's got that lovely, lovely cascading effect. And these blooms are absolutely beautiful. And these petals do tend to, uh, to curl up, making these bloom like a ball of flowers and very reminiscent of a, a carnation. And has a lovely, lovely medium fruity raspberry scent. This rose was very uh, slow in delaying its second flush as it was in, uh, in its pot for quite a few weeks. And these blooms does seem to last quite a few days. Okay, it's very windy, but this rose seems to have the, uh, all the three characteristics of a good rose. A rose that has good fragrance, uh, good for flowering, and good disease resistant. Look at that absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous rose. And these blooms are very luminous, fluorescent in colour. So impressive for this rose. And I can't wait for this rose to mature. And maybe perhaps these blooms will get bigger. And, and look at these size blooms next to my thumb. So small. And really, really looking impressive. And I do have another rose called Danahue that's in the shade at the moment. And it is producing a lot of fresh stems for this time of the year but I won't show you that as it's not in flower at the moment. But that would be another rose to consider for a, a partial shaded garden. And thank you again for joining me today where I try to showcase some of the, uh, the partial shaded loving roses in my garden. But there are some others that I haven't really shown you as well. But just before I go, 
I wanted to show this fantastic looking rose. This is Leonardo da Vinci by Meyland. This is an absolute flower machine. There is nothing in my garden at this moment that's looking just as good as this. And these blooms last a very, very long time. And it's such a shame these don't have any scent. And I really recommend anyone starting to start rose growing for themselves. And this is a very easy rose to look after with little maintenance, but with such a stunning effect. And I keep raving about how good this rose is. But it's such a, such an amazing rose. Okay, that's it for today. And I hope you all have a lovely day. And I will see you all again soon.